that the rest of the world builds relationships first from which they do business. Unfortunately, many of us as Americans are so focused on the business part that if and only if the business part works, we'll think about building relationships. And one of the fundamental challenges with technology, whether it's internet marketing or social media, is that it loses the personal touch. It loses the ability for you to build and nurture those relationships. But you cannot abdicate your relationships to technology. Email has zero personality. So I know you get it. Teach your teams. Teach the next generation that's coming into this business to pick up the phone and call people, to go and see them instead of typing away. Getting and giving business cards, right? We've all been to referral meetings and right, networking events, and you come back with a stack of cards, and did you just get cards, or did you actually get a chance to get to know anybody? Are you just collecting business cards? Are you just connecting with people on LinkedIn and Facebook and you know, following them on Twitter? Or are you building and nurturing relationships? Because digital relationships are gonna take more effort. Because they don't know you, they don't see you. It's gonna take more nurturing. The other question I ask a lot of people is, you know a lot of people, respectfully, so what? How many of them return your calls and emails in 24 hours? How many of them have called you in the last year and a half, two years to ask, how you doing? And what's going on in your business? There are three shifts in social networking that you need to think about. Think of these as overarching. Number one, influence. Influence is the new driver for success. So if you learn how to manage that influence, you're going to gain market leadership. And there are two types of influence. Direct influence, where I influence you directly, right? And indirect. By show of hands, how many of you have ever received a referral for a listing? Right? What was your direct cost for that referral? Nothing at that moment. Now you'd worked and nurtured relationships and you worked hard to do that, build a reputation. But the cost is the most valuable type of right, opportunity, and the acquisition cost is least expensive. The challenge is, you don't have as much control over that direct influence. What Sandy says about me, I don't have as much control over, right? So, indirect influence is about creating evangelist. What this basically means to you is you need to create opportunities online where people are talking about you. Not you talking about you, others talking about you. And the best way to do that, I said this when we first started, educate first, promote, market, sell second. I don't wanna know everything you know about real estate. I wanna know, spring is coming up, what do I need to do to list my house and sell it and move on to the next chapter of my life? So what are you doing to add value to our interaction? What are you doing to educate me? What are you doing to be blunt and tell me that's a really ugly paint color and people are gonna walk in and freak out with that? Or you know what, let's caulk out the run. I mean, all the things you know how to already do well. I would submit a lot of homeowners, I've been one of them several times, they need someone like you to tell them what they need to hear, not what they want to hear. And that candor creates a certain level of authenticity. Right? If you don't have a blog, that should be step number one. Right? From there, getting more active on social networks where you can drive your traffic to that blog. And then the pinnacle of that today is really building a, a private community. Think of everybody you've sold a home to as a community, as a, as a private network that you can nurture and introduce them to each other. I think that's really important to think of is your website or your blog as the hub, as the centralized hub. Think of social networking as outposts to drive traffic, to drive awareness to that hub. Your website is where you have the most control over. That's where you want to post the most updated information and create awareness, create traffic. This isn't build and they'll come. You gotta go create traffic and pull, or what we call marketing gravity, back to your website, back to your blog. So blogs, write down WordPress, Word, W-O-R-D, Press. WordPress is a free tool. Free is always in the budget, right? It's a free tool that allows you to get a blog up and running, and more importantly, tie it to your website. And what blogs are good for is, here's what's happening. At nights, when you and I are sleeping, Google comes and crawls the web. They scrape the web looking for new, interesting content. Most websites don't change a whole lot. 
right? If your website doesn't change, Google comes and looks at it and says, not much has changed, I'm moving on. Conversely, if you're updating your blog on a consistent basis, it now has a reason to come back. You don't want Google skipping your website. Because if it skips your websites, you're gonna go down on that ranking, right? Next, content. Content marketing. If you uh, give me a hot topic in your backyard at the moment. Short sales. Do you have an opinion on short sales? Okay, do, do you have an opinion on it? I'm not sure. Yeah. Do you have an opinion on it? Could you write three to five hundred words? By the way, that's the preferred link of a blog, three to five hundred words. Nobody wants to read a dissertation. But if you write something compelling, and by the way, way too many people write to be nice, that's okay. But unless you excite or disturb me, I'm never getting off the dime. Let me say it again. Unless you excite or disturb me, I'm not getting off the dime. I'm not picking up the phone and calling you because you just educated me. Respectfully, teachers don't get paid much. Right? So push my buttons. Get me to think differently. Different people come into your website for very different reasons. The problem is you don't know who they are. You don't know why they're there. I want you to look into something called Google Analytics. Google Analytics is great, it's free. I love free tools. And it can tell you not only where that traffic is coming to your website from, but here's a critical part, where it's leaving from. Because if they're leaving, and by the way, Comscore will tell you people will leave if they can't find what they're looking for within seven to 10 seconds or three clicks. If you find out where they're leaving from, those are holes in your boat that we can plug, right? So look at Google Alerts. Again, it's really cheap, it's free, and it's easy to set up, but it can show you where that traffic is coming from, where it's leaving from.